Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. I've had, if you've watched the videos this week, uh, some interesting games and some interesting teams, <laughs> both in the good and in the not so good way, uh, to deal with. So uh, with this video, um, I've got two battles for you, and I am in my Hindenburg. This is mine, this is my personal account. That's my Hindenburg, and this is how I normally set up my how I, how I have set up my Hindenburg. Uh, I've got the historical camo for this thing, and I am actually sailing with double rudder. I might at some point switch uh, switch this this out to uh, to the propulsion mod, but uh, I like playing my Hindenburg quite aggressively at times. And uh, I have a level nine commander in there. Nothing special so far, and. Uh, I have decided not to go with the additional precise aim, but instead have the survival list for more hit points. And obviously the one skill that I'm really looking forward to is the APCS, but not quite there yet, but we're working on it. Anyway, two battles in the Hindenburg, and uh, these really got me scratching my head <laughs> in a what the flip is going on here? And we're starting out on Friars Lantern in domination against Schlieffen Republic, Austin, Yodo, Buffalo, and Shimakaze. Of course, there has to be Shimakazes. But uh, all in all, not a terrible mix of things. And uh, the Hindenburg is a ship that I really enjoy because, well, she can usually take on most things that are out there. So we're probably going to head over into Sea Cup and uh, make ourselves useful over there while maintaining firing angles into A cup, at least. That was my initial thinking. That's a bot. Um, we've got one destroy, two destroyers here. We'll see which one, uh, which one's going where. But uh, I'll actually, uh, I'll actually go past, are you moving? Yes, you're moving. Uh, I'm actually going to go past on that island ahead of me on the right side, which is not usually my, my lane of advance because it's the more aggressive, uh, it's, it's the more aggressive way. But uh, that'll allow me to that'll allow me to get angles into A cup, and I was assuming that that destroyer that was spawning over at A cup would actually head into A cup, which doesn't happen. And then the Schlieffen is triggering the sonar, and I am already knowing what I'm in for today. <laughs> uh, Somers, where the heck are you going? A cup, uh, Schlieffen. <laughs> sonar for what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, yes, it's a Shimakaze, but there's no way you're ever going to get torpedoed on that, right? Anyway, uh, there's the Shimakaze, who has decided that he wants to start a gun duel. Now's a good a good time to <laughs> switch on the, so the sonar, while um, the Shimakaze obviously decided that he wanted to burn down the bot Ibuki. And uh, <laughs> there should be torpedoes in the water, by all means, but there is a buffalo as well, so I do have to actually vacate this spot because I'm now coming under fire from a Yodo and the Buffalo and something just blapped me in the side massively. I have no idea what that even was. Uh, the Yudaloi has set a smoke screen for the Schlieffen, uh, I think, or me, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what that, who that smoke screen was for, but because there's nobody there and I can't stay here because there is a... Uh, I, have been, I have been getting some, some really nasty crossfire here, so somewhere there's a Shimakaze, but I do have two cruisers to shoot at now, so let's begin with the Yodo who um, thinks that uh, he's in a battleship <laughs> and uh, well <laughs> uh, nope <laughs> okay so that's the yodo gone um, obviously triple fire so and I've, I've lost sufficient amount why is everybody shooting at me <laughs> i've lost enough hit points at this point uh, that um, i'm gonna go and uh, and, and shoot at the should I, shoot, shoot a little back at that Schlieffen back there, because there's a Shimakaze out there, and the Yudaloi is smoking me up, and again, thank you very much, that's uh, that's much appreciated, while engaging the Shimakaze. Uh, Schlieffen, meanwhile, has um, decided to detect the Shimakaze with his face, and <laughs> has, paid, has paid the price for that endeavor. So, uh, shots out at the Shimakaze, and, but there's a buffalo over there, so I can't go chasing after it. And there comes some torpedoes, probably from the Schlieffen. So um, yeah, Udaloy. <laughs> we might need to get out of there. I might need. I'm, I need a little bit more hit points. But uh, then let's head over into B Cup, while uh, the battleship on our team is trying to. Well, well, he's seen what's going, what's what's been happening, and has decided that he wants to get into the next map. Um, 
There is a buffalo. There is something that's smoking up. Oh, this is actually our destroyer. Uh, okay. Uh, that would have been the Somers. But uh, I don't think his torpedoes were particularly well aimed. Otherwise, that would be a dead buffalo. But the Somers now obviously has a problem. Also, there's that Shimakaze over there. And he is way too close for armor piercing. So I'm going to drop some torpedoes. And yeah, Somers has has smoked up, then decided that smoke didn't help, because, well, he was in point-blank range of a buffalo and is now out of torpedoes, so, and being shot at by a buffalo, which has taken him out. And Udaloy comes to the rescue, decides, get down, Mr. President. <laughs> but Somers has gotten some more torpedoes away, but uh, I can take out the buffalo without too much trouble. Of course, that means there's now a Shimakaze, which is running into Udaloy torpedoes, uh, but um, I am too close now for the for the armor piercing, so I do need to switch to high explosive. I am going to uh, just uh, sonar the, the Shimakaze because he's so close that he can't hide in his smoke because, you know, Hindenburg has sonar and is now a very dead Shimakaze. So at this point, uh, we are a couple of points ahead and we're about to take B Cup. Now we still have that battleship up north that decided to try and sail into the next map and there is an Austin out there. But if we take B, and, um, I mean, Udaloy, I don't know what you're trying to do, but B cap might have been a great idea. <laughs> if we can take B, we might still pull this off. So, uh, because Austin is something I can take on. That's a full health Udaloy. And that battleship, uh, defend point B from what? Uh, capture point B. But, I mean, I, I, I take it that that's what you meant. Um, and I am going to be real careful with the big guns out there, because that's a Republic. But uh, let's see, let's see, we'll definitely heal up a little bit more and get the salvo out at the Frenchman, uh, which has just taken out the Black Republic. And there's still an, oh, that thing is way faster than I thought. Uh, there's still an Orson out there. Okay, Udaloy. Uh, I'm going to destruct him and you go torpedo this guy uh, because that hurts and I, I don't have any more heals left, so... Uh, okay, he's going around the... No, no, no. Where are you going? No, no, not the right side. He's going around the the other side. Where, where are you going? There's an Austin out there who's got nothing to shoot. Udaloy, why? <laughs> you were doing so well. <laughs> um, there was There's an Austin out there. Uh, the other side of the island. And then Blap the Republic. Yes, that Austin over there. Okay, I'm going to see if I can hit the Austin. That thing's almost full health. Uh, that's an Austin. You know what that can do, right? Uh, I think you're about to find out, because <laughs> if he's got the... Yeah, that's exactly what the Austin can do. And the Udalo is dead. <laughs> and the Austin gets away. Oh, he's tried to torpedo... Why are you trying to torpedo the Austin? Uh, okay, so all I've got left is a Botibuki, and even though we're holding two of the capture circles, uh, at this point, um, yeah, <laughs> we've lost. <laughs> Unless I can take down the Republic or the Austin. Austin would be easy, but the Austin knows that as well and has buggered off. Whereas the Republic, I can try maybe, but uh, I don't think I'm going to get that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to make that work within the time remaining, especially that that's a Republic and these things really hurt and they're also really fast. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't I don't think I can make that happen. So we may as well go down fighting. Uh, I've got 15 seconds left. There's no way I'm ever gonna. Yeah, now that's the Schlieff, and he's got way too much hit points, and uh, he is actually shooting at me as well. So yeah, there we go. Uh, may as well do as much damage as I can. But uh, yeah, there was absolutely no way that I was ever going to. <laughs> I was ever going to pull that one off. Um, so uh, that was uh, fast and brutal. <laughs> And got me, got me scratching my head about some of my team's decisions, uh, and of the enemy team's decisions as well, uh, pretty furiously. I was like, I always say, you know, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, as long as it was an interesting fight. This certainly was interesting. So I decided to try again. And Matchmaker said, you know what? You're a large German heavy cruiser. I'm going to give you a Midway, an incomparable, an Austin, triple Shima and a Fletcher <laughs> in Encounter on Base Culture. <laughs> Gee, thanks much, Mickey. <laughs> it's, okay, uh, let's get that going. Uh, we do have um, we do have a couple of destroyers of our own. I mean, a Halland would be quite useful. And... Uh, Honestly, at this point, um, 
I think the only one who's liking this less than me is the Gosa Kurfürst on my team. <laughs> it's, uh, we can only hope that the Malta knows what he's doing, <laughs> because uh, all I can technically do here is... Um, well, I mean, I'm, I am... Jokes aside, I'm pretty good against destroyers. I just don't have the utility. I mean, I have the sonar. Uh, uh, that is extremely ambitious. Yeah, I think uh, cap, going for the cap is not really is not really happening. Uh, oh, dear. Um, well, I, for one, am going to... And, and people, you know that there are two destroyers coming around this flank, right? Uh, Holland gearing. I mean, Holland. Good play here. Halland gets himself underneath the enemy carrier. And Gearing can help out. That thing's got some AA. Uh, and I'm helping as well. And they have... Uh, yeah, the carrier has missed uh, with his torpedo drop. And we have to take care that I'm not taking it. And we have our first Shimakaze spotted. Hello, Mr. Shimakaze. Uh, who has been spotted out in the open and decided that he wants to get into a gunfight. And has actually come to a complete halt. Standing a broadside on to most of my team, including the uh, the guns of a Hindenburg. So, um, yeah. Oh, he, he might have tried to dodge the, the the carrier drop. Okay, fair enough. Has missed the Benham with his torpedoes. The Benham, obviously, not being squirmish about torpedoes, uh, <laughs> is is just spamming him. I've got a couple of good hits in, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it looks like we're, once again, everyone is just going to go furiously ham. The Gosa Kurfus has decided that what he wants to do is guard the carrier. I'm not exactly sh sure what he wants to guard him from, short of just being a meat shield, <laughs> which you can do. But he might have been a little bit more useful aggressively, but there's another Shimakaze who has not read the memo that you do not sail broadside on in a Hindenburg like that, especially not in a straight line. But he can't. He, he doesn't have a choice, right? Because he's getting torpedoes, but he's not he torpedoed, so he couldn't turn. It just means he's now very dead. Uh, unfortunately, that thing in front of me there, uh, that's the incomparable. <laughs> and while I'm finishing off that Fletcher, uh, almost, uh, yeah, that's an incomparable. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. Uh, destroyers, if you wouldn't mind, uh, that's an incomparable. I, 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 that's not something I'm gonna take. Yeah, exactly, because that's what an incomparable is doing to me. Uh, uh, oh yeah, and there's a Shimakaze as well, who seem could have torpedoed me at any point, but seems to enough seems to be more interested in the Gosa Kur first. And uh, there are some torpedoes passing. Yes, please, somebody kill, <laughs> kill, kill the incomparable. Okay. Um, Right then, I'm not going to kill the Incomparable. I, I will help against the Shimakaze. Uh, I've got Gearing. Okay, Gearing is taking up the slack here, uh, dealing with the Incomparable. Uh, Gosa Kur first. Now you can be useful. Uh, you've got lots of secondaries, you've got Sonar, and you you should have the health from experience to, to survive a single Shim Shimakaze strike while the carrier is going after me. Uh, let's see what the Shimakaze is capable of doing. Yes, the Gosa Kur first is me shielding. Uh, let's see if he survives. And he is going to take a lot of damage from that, from a triple Shima drop, but he is not going to be dead, and... No, he, he is dead. Okay, I thought you would be able to survive that anyway, but now I have a very, very close range Shima, which is a bit of a problem, but I do have torpedoes, which I don't need, because the Haaland just killed the Shima. And uh, the Shima was out of torpedoes anyway, but uh, that leaves that incomparable, who's still being chased by the gearing. And uh, there's an Austin over there, so I've got about 2,800 hit points left. <laughs> Uh, which means I'm gonna back off because that carrier is gonna try and kill me if the incom I think the incomparable is otherwise occupied But the Austin is a problem because the Halland obviously can't do anything against the Austin the, the the carrier can't really do anything against the Austin and the Austin can can just go brut So he can melt the Halland away without trouble So with my little with what little health I have remaining I'm gonna try and do my very best to uh, to hurt that Austin and uh, and, and see if I can take him down, or if I can at least get him uh, get him damaged enough that... Uh, no, nope, I take him down. And I am now being taken out by the carrier, but that's fine. That's all I needed to do. All I had to do was kill that Austin. And uh, it looks like the incomparable is... Yeah. <laughs> it's still dealing with the gearing. Or shall we put it the other way around? And it's like, okay, your move. <laughs> Come on, then. <laughs> Come on, then. Do, do, do something. <laughs> Go on, mate. <laughs> and uh, Gearing's like, I'm in a smoke screen. And Compro was like, dude, I can't see you. <laughs> Gearing is now dead. <laughs> uh, but at least he hasn't been torpedoed by the Incomparable. But uh, the Incomparable now is obviously under air attack because the carrier isn't stupid. 
and the Holland is in a good position to take on the enemy carrier. Uh, very well played from our from our carrier here because the Malta really needed to take out Incomparable because that thing was way more dangerous than the Midway, and uh, uh, the, which has now decided to <laughs> to go to go in for the brawl <laughs> while trying to direct his his torpedo bombers and take on the Holland, which isn't happening. <laughs> Not in, not with enemy air cover and with with the AA that a Holland is having. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the the midway is now going to die, and uh, that was way closer than it needed to be. It was utterly chaotic, <laughs> and there was some some really really questionable decision making on all sides. But uh, I feel like with the kill on the Austin, at least I have uh, done my part in in uh, getting the team to win. Because uh, that thing would have been an absolute nightmare to deal with for Holland and the carrier together. And especially with backup from the midway. So all in all, I think uh, deserved for the Malta. <laughs> and <laughs> at that point, uh, I personally decided that it was high time that I got, um, uh, I got to close my eyes for the night. <laughs> there are way too, many, way too many sketchy people out there right now. <laughs> It's not that I'm not enjoying that, and hopefully you did as well. But uh, there's only so much, so much crazy I can deal with uh, when it's been already a long night. So that's it for me today. Thanks everybody. Uh, still have a good weekend. I think I'm going to release this on Saturday, so you, I hope you still have a good weekend, and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.